Hey, it's Metagosis Perfect Schnellus, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we'll continue our series called Science in Medicine. In previous videos, we have talked about the Homan's sign, Koenig's sign, Brudzinski sign, and Gower's sign. Today it's time for Schwistic sign, seen in hypocalcemia or tetany. With that said, now let's get started. First of all, you gotta understand that we have two types of calcium. We have the uncharged or unionized calcium, and then we have the charged or ionized calcium. Which one of them is physiologically active? The answer is only the ionized calcium is. The uncharged is not physiologically active. You can just ram it into bones, give it some structure, and that's about it. But the ionized calcium is the one that we care about because it's physiologically active. This is the calcium that can lead to muscle contraction. This is the calcium that will lead to blood coagulation. And this is the calcium that will lead to effects on nerve excitability. That's the physiologically active calcium, baby. So in tetany, what's happening is decreased ionized calcium. This is the calcium that we care about. Now, total body calcium. Again, body calcium. The total body calcium. Total calcium in your body. 99% of the calcium in your body is in bones. 1% in cells. Only 0.1% in the ECF. And believe it or not, this is the one that we care about. This calcium is little in amount, yet robust in activity. Where is the ECF calcium? It's in the extracellular fluid. No kidding. Where exactly? Some of it is bound to plasma proteins. Another part is the free calcium in the plasma. This is what you call the plasma calcium. And some is bound to other organic and inorganic ions. Case in point, calcium citrate or calcium phosphate. One and three are non-ionized, therefore we couldn't care less. Only the free calcium in the plasma is ionized. But please understand, when you order serum calcium in the lab and it comes normal between 9 and 10.5, this is not the free plasma calcium because the free plasma calcium is only 5 milligrams per deciliter. So what is the total calcium? Why couldn't I just order ionized calcium? Because it's so stinking expensive. It's way easier to order total serum calcium, but please understand that this includes free calcium in the plasma plus other calcium. Only the ionized, the charged, the calcium 2 plus is physiologically active. Disruption in this calcium level will lead to symptoms. Romeo's strength was in his love, whereas the strength of calcium is in the charges. Functions of calcium. Number one, skeletal muscle contraction. Please watch my videos on anti-acetylcholine receptor antibodies because we have talked about this before. Here is a nerve. The nerve wants to talk to your muscle. In order for the nerve to talk to the muscle, the nerve has to secrete acetylcholine, which is stored in vesicles. Once the acetylcholine is secreted, it can bind to the acetylcholine receptor, specifically N sub M, and then the muscle is gonna contract. How do I release this doozy acetylcholine from the vesicle? The answer is, you need an action potential. Oh, you know, like, like sodium in and depolarization, that's true. And then this will lead to calcium influx. Calcium will rupture the physical because calcium is the hero of contraction. Also, calcium is the hero of blood coagulation. Speaking of contraction, it will contract the vesicle. Acetylcholine is out, bind to the N sub M receptor at the neuromuscular junction. And then you have skeletal muscle contraction. Moreover, inside the stinking muscle, there is a sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is a modified smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And then it has calcium. Not only this, it has calcium-induced calcium release. And then actin will bind to myosin and boom, you have muscle contraction. This was charged, ionized, physiologically active calcium. The ionized charged calcium is also the hero of cardiac muscle contraction. Here is the story. Here's your cardiac muscle. Sodium out, potassium in. What is this? Primary sodium potassium ATPase. And then, depending on the ATPase, we have secondary sodium calcium exchanger or sodium calcium antiport. Normally, we push the sodium in and the calcium out. Why is this? Because the first pump had the sodium out. Accumulation of sodium out will lead to repulsion because positive, 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 positive. They will repel each other. Sodium in, calcium out. Positive in, positive out to maintain electroneutrality. So what is the mechanism of action of digoxin or digitalis? It inhibits the primary sodium potassium ATVase. And since the secondary was dependent on the primary, the secondary is also inhibited. Calcium will not leave the cell. Calcium will stay in your cardiac myocyte. Calcium is the hero of contraction. You will end up with contraction. 
Here is digoxin, and we have talked before about all of the positive anotropic medications that can increase cardiac contractility. Please watch my video on dopamine and dobutamine. Calcium is the hero of blood coagulation. Again, it's the charged ionized calcium. Some textbooks will consider calcium to be coagulation factor number four. So here is a calcium mnemonic. Functions of calcium, contraction of muscle, coagulation of blood, cohesion of bone. Calcium imbalance will lead to constipation, carbopedal spasm, cardiac arrest during systole, contra-excitability, and contra-QT interval. What do you mean by contra-excitability? If you have high calcium, your nerve excitability will decrease. But if you have low calcium, your nerve excitability will increase. What do you mean by contra-QT interval? If you have high calcium, this will shorten your QT interval on ECG. But if you have low calcium, this will increase the duration of the QT interval on ECG because calcium equals contraction. More about this on my previous video titled Calcium Mnemonic. Calcium, especially the charged ionized calcium, is vital for neuromuscular physiology. We get it. Therefore, hypo or hypercalcemia will lead to neuroexcitability problems. We get it. High calcium will lead to decreased excitability, and low calcium will lead to increased excitability. So, calcium is inversely proportional with excitability. Calcium is contra excitability. So, what is tetany? Tetany is not to be confused with tetanus. Both of them have contractions, but they are not the same. Hypocalcemia will lead to increased nerve excitability because calcium is contra-excitability. And this is the story behind chivistic sign and Rousseau sign. Here is a positive chivistic sign. Get your lovely patient with tetany. Amazing. And then bring your beloved percussion hammer. Tap the patient on the facial nerve. Don't forget that the facial nerve will pierce through the parotid gland. It will traverse the gland without supplying it because the parotid is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve, also known as cranial nerve number nine. You need to study your anatomy, doofus, so you can tap on the parotid gland. You see facial nerve there. If the patient has tetany, calcium is low, therefore nerve excitability is high. Look at this facial nerve hyperexcitability. The facial nerve on the right side will contract. What does the facial nerve do? It will contract the orbicularis oculi muscle, leading to closure of the eyelid or closure of the eye. It will lead to elevation of the eyebrow, wrinkling of the forehead on the right side. And look at this. The patient is smiling to the right side only. Due to contraction of the buccinator muscle, the levator anguli oris muscle, and the levator labii superioris muscle, among many others. In the next video, we'll talk about Rousseau signs. Not just one sign, but many signs, because Rousseau was a very hard-working stud. He discovered not only one sign, but two signs. If you know what are the two Rousseau signs, let me know the answer in the comment section. To learn more about calcium, hypocalcemia and hypercalcemia and the ECG changes that happen with electrolyte imbalances, check out my electrolyte course available at medicosisperfectionalis.com. You can download it today. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses like the antibiotics course, anti-cancer pharmacology course, cardiac pharmacology course, and even the electrolytes course. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.